Hi everyone! Today we're having a look at Fairy Touch of Magic, which is the brand new book from Clara Markova. You'll know that she produces some absolutely beautiful colouring books with very, very high quality production and materials used. And they're just beautiful. There's nothing more to say about them really. They're stunning, they're very charming um, and kind of sweet and whimsical. That's the sort of thing that you get in with a Clara book. She also brought out these postcards, I Believe in Fairies, and I'm going to show you this as well. In fact, I'll show you this first. So let me move this out of the way. So these are 32 colouring postcards. And again, just that production quality, you can see it's absolutely beautiful. So we open them up at the back. And all of the postcards are loose. So they're within this sort of a cardboard frame, but they are loose. It says 32 colouring postcards by Clara Markova. Um, printed in the fairy forest by Clara and her fairy helpers. So that's just a little bit of information there. Then we've got this fully coloured one, which has a little note from Clara on the back, and it reads, I'm placing a piece of my heart in your hands with love. This small magical pink box holds a magic treasure. 32 colouring postcards from my fairy world. Each of these pictures carries a beautiful message full of love and tenderness. Thank you for spreading this message with me and showing the world a little bit of magical realm beyond this human world. Every postcard you send, every pack of these postcards you give as a present, will help bring more smiles and joy to the faces of those who receive them. You are sending love and happiness in their purest form. And it goes on and it says, um, with love, Clara. So it's really nice to have that little note from her and a really nice piece of artwork as well, just to go on the wall. You could frame it, you could gift that. And then we have the postcards themselves. So they are really, really thick. I'll do the snap test. Uh, as you can hear, they're very thick. They have a sort of off-white ivory colour to them, so they're not bright white. And on the back, you have room to write your little address and your message. There's a little bit of a colouring emblem there and room for a stamp as well. So you can actually send these. And yeah, I think it's going to be fantastic to colour and send these. Maybe, for, well, maybe not for Christmas. It's a little bit close now, but probably as Easter gifts or, you know, just anything really, just to say hello in these times of COVID. Um, we're all being kept apart, aren't we? So it's nice just to have something personalised and custom from somebody, um, just showing that you're thinking of them, basically. So I'll just go through each postcard. You can slow the video down or pause it if you want to have a, a look at the image more closely. But as you can see, they're all beautiful. And uh, we've got a little bird here perching on the edge of a teacup. You'll know if you've seen Clara's books before, this is exactly the kind of thing she excels in. Fairies and that kind of magical world. So we have a little elf here or a gnome. Looks a little bit like Santa. We've got some macarons on that one. We've got strawberries and a unicorn. It's really sweet. These are very small projects as well that you can do quite quickly. You could do them with your kids. Um, especially with the subject matter of the postcards, I think kids would absolutely love these. And uh, everything's everything's really sweet and fun. So what did I say there was? 32 postcards and as you can see each one has lots of detail for you to colour. But with it being on a smaller scale you should be able to get them done quite quickly. So yeah, I think it's really really worth buying. And you know, even if you don't want to colour them, if you just really love Clara's artwork, these are basically prints that you could display, you could frame. And I think that's about it. There we go. So that's all of the postcards from the I Believe in Fairies collection. Of course, link will be in the description below for you to go and buy those if it's just those that you want to buy. And I'll just pop these back. I just love this window at the front, isn't it sweet? And then we just pop them in there like that. And again, the whole box would make a really good present for somebody if you're wanting to buy a gift that, you know, they can do while they're while we're all in quarantine and lockdown and all that stuff. So yeah, beautiful. Let's get on to the book then, Fairy Touch of Magic. So it's exactly the same as the other books in terms of production, size, etc. So you've got the hardback, you've got the sort of linen stitched uh, spine with the gold lettering. And then on the back, you've again got some of this gold embellishments to the illustration. Now it says, in the silence of a magical night, a gentle clink of a ne little needle against a thimble is carrying through the woods. What else will a walk through the mysterious woodland full of magic bring? Come with me on a journey where adorable little bats embroider mushroom tablecloths, where magical pumpkins tell stories, and where magic waits behind every tree you touch. Stop time and let your soul sing out with joy. 
Give the pictures a life full of colours and create an entirely new story, a story of your very own. Discover the realm of the little elves, fairies and cute little witches and experience their lives full of joy, love and peace. I drew everything with so much love. Yours, Clara. So I really like the colour of this one. I know that's a bit odd, but an odd thing to point out. But I love the colour of this. It's really sort of plum, deep, um, purplish colour. Really, really like it. And they all look really nice on the shelf together, which is great. So first page is the title page. You always have this, this black page first. And uh, the title page is fully colourable, as you can see. It's also signed by Clara. I believe she signs all of her books. Then we have a few words about her here, which I think I've read in previous books, um, book reviews. It says that it has 112 pages, which is about standard. And then we have the nameplate page. Pop your name there, maybe the date you started the book. And again, lots of things to colour. Now, as usual with Clara's books, they are one-sided. So you will either see uh, a single page spread like this that has um, a little thing on the back here that you can write what date you finished it or whatever you want to do. And it will also have something to colour as well. There are double page spreads in this, but again, they will have something like this on the back. So you're not going to ruin any of the images, no matter whether it's a full double page spread or a single one. So we've got a couple of little elves here looking out of their little um, house. As you can see, we've got some boxed macarons and uh, I think this is a Christmas gift probably. We've got a little balloon that says Sophie on it and the little girl is coming out of the front door. We've got some daffodils framing it as well. I'm not going to describe every single image because we would be here all day. <laughs> but um, just to describe the paper, it is exactly the same as the previous books. But if you don't have any previous Clara books, it's really, really thick. Again, it's got that off-white, creamy, ivory colour to it. And it's got a beautiful sort of medium tooth for coloured pencils. It's not too rough. Uh, it's more on the smoother side, but it definitely does have some tooth there. Uh, let's have a look. So there's all sorts happening. I really love Clara's imagination because it's, she always manages to bring images out that I've never seen before and compositions that I've never seen before. So you can see here that we've got this little elf boy who's blowing bubbles through a heart-shaped bubble blower. And it's things like that, you know, that it's very, very unique. I'm loving this kind of cauldron vase that's going on here as well. It's like magical spells are being cast. So throughout this book, we've got mice, we've got um, we've got little dragons, we've got people and elves and fairy creatures um, and lots of woodland nature inspired things. So if you're into colouring flowers and things like that, it's a fantastic book. So here's that little dragon I was mentioning. He's got a key around his neck and that's another theme that runs through Clara's books is they're often keys. And here's one of those examples of a double page spread. So you can see here that we've got two back pages so that means that we have a double page spread coming up. And then on the back of that, again, you will have a blankish page. So here's the double page spread. It looks like we've got, well, that looks like an onion to me, but apparently it's a hyacinth. They're hyacinths, aren't they? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> so we've got um, lots of things going on here. I think it's flower picking and harvesting time. You can see there's a spade in the background and this girl looks like she's just picked a bunch of these flowers. So this looks like a fairy... Well, it could be a fairy rabbit, I think. It's got fairy wings and rabbit ears, and it looks like it's delivering gifts. So maybe this is an Easter themed one. So again, just lots of fairies. You can slow this video down or pause it at any time to look at another page in more detail. Um, but there are so many pages, I could be here all day. So we've got, oh, I think she, what is she doing? So we've got a river here with lily pads on it and she's so light and nimble that she's actually stood on a lily pad and she's not going through it and drowning. <laughs> so yeah, it just shows you how, um, how small this world is and how much of a zoomed in look we're getting at this magical land. She's got her socks there drying off on a rock and yeah, I think she's just gone for a little paddle. So this is an underwater themed one. We've got seahorse and mermaid. Again, some fish and octopus. The octopus, octopi, octopuses are really, really sweet. I love these little jellyfish as well. So yeah, the back pages sometimes change depending on the theme of the section of the book. So this one's underwater. So we have an underwater themed back page. A couple of mermaids combing each other's hair. And we've got some cute little dolphins as well. They look like baby dolphins. And here's the one that I've started to colour. As you can see, I've not quite finished it yet. I've had so many projects on in the last few weeks and months. I don't seem to be getting anything finished. Um, but as you can see, I've made a really good start on it. 
and this was also the page that I showed me using the new Arteza white gel pens which are fantastic gel pens and if you haven't come across that yet it's one of the most recent videos on my channel so if you're looking for a really good reliable white gel pen I think I've found it um yeah so I did the bottle by first of all colouring the scroll that was inside then completely erasing what I'd coloured leaving about 10% of the pigment on the page and then going over it with these bottle green colours then I got um, a big bottle of white ink, I think it was PH Martin's uh, liquid white, and I just brushed over loads of different highlights. It might not be realistic to what the highlights would be on a bottle, but I think it gives that effect. And um, the coloured pencils that I was using all throughout this were the Brunzeal Design pencils. Um, which, yeah, they're good. They're quite hard. Well, they're not hard. They're so Okay, I'll start again. <laughs> they're not very soft compared to, like, the Prismacolors that I would usually use. But they're not rock hard either. It just takes a little bit more time to blend them. But, yeah, as you can see, they're super pigmented. So I'm going to have to do a review on those soon. But, yeah, I really like to use in some different shades for a change. Prismacolors are absolutely fantastic, but when you're using the same brand of pencil over and over again, you can get pretty bored with the colour combinations that you're using, and pages start to look sort of similar because they've all got the exact same uh, red blend or blue blend or whatever, so it's nice to use something different for a change. And the paper reacted really well to it, as it does with most different things. As you can see, as usual, I didn't put any white paper behind, so I've got this image going onto the back, but it's okay. Some more underwater imagery here, just going to flick through. But yeah, if you are a fan of Clara's, you will definitely want this book because it's just more of the same, really. She seems to be an unending well of imagination for these beautiful fairy creatures and mystical lands. I don't know how she comes up with them. Look at this gorgeous wedding dress. It is. It has the little fairy wings on the back. It also has leaves um, at the sleeve here, which is stunning. And all of these beautiful floro, floral motifs and bouquets running down it as well. So then we've got a little elf sat on top of a cat and it looks like they're all ready to ready for Christmas really. They've got little baubles on them but then again the strawberries are out so it seems quite spring summertime. I don't know, it's up to you how you want to colour it. Um, some elves again, I think this is the wedding day. So you can see we've got the, uh, the girl wearing the dress here and the headdress. We've got the bow and the ribbon and yeah, just lovely. So this is a wedding then I suppose. It's, a, it's the whole it's the whole wedding weekend uh, we've got a couple of fairies here it looks like there's a honeycomb in the background we've got a snail uh, just licking some of the honey that's dripping from above then we've got uh, what looks like a storyteller so this is like an old kind of granddad elf that sat there with the candles in the background it's night time and all of the little kids are listening very intently to his story it's almost lord of the ringsy when you think about it it's that kind of whimsical little slice of the world so we've got a reindeer we've got little Rudolph here he's got his antlers and so we're moving in definitely into the Christmas time now I should think or at least into the second half of the year and um, we have donuts we've got what looks like a oh I don't know actually it looked a little bit like a hedgehog but I'm not sure it is just one of those creatures we're not sure what it is um, this looks like a bit of a haunted house type. It do, I mean, it doesn't really, but I think that's what I'd make it into because of the silhouettes of the cats and, you know, stuff that's going on there. Another double page spread coming up. Yes, definitely is Halloween. This is the haunted house spread, isn't it? So you can see that we've got uh, the moon looking down on the haunted house. And uh, just beyond the gates, we've got some pumpkins. Diodolus Myrtos looking doll here in the uh, in the coffin, which is quite creepy. I love it. Um, and it's just, I guess, trick or treat night. Fantastic. We've got a witch here doing her spells in the cauldron. And we've got a bat sewing tablecloths, as it said on the back of the book. We've got a couple of dragons mixing up something. It looks like a fruit pie or some sort of stew. Pretzels in the background. Looks like they eat well anyway. It's, it's absolutely stunning all of the things that she draws that they're eating and they're cooking. Uh, we've got a little bit of a musical interlude here. And I think this is a big hen. Looks like surrounded by salt dough Christmas decorations here. And he's also standing or standing beside a, uh, a Santa's sleigh. 
So you can see how the back pages are changing now with the season. This looks beautiful. It looks like we've got slices of orange and lemon uh, amidst this drink. It looks like she's making a cocktail or a juice of some sort, maybe a mulled wine and the little flame underneath. Gingerbread people as well. And those gingerbread people are here flying on broomsticks. So it's almost like a Halloween Christmas mashup. Then we've got a Christmas tree house, which is gorgeous. Again, with the decorations, the little gnomes and baubles. This looks to be inside the house. So we've got a roaring fire and a really comfy, cosy armchair. Carol singers, quite possibly, on this one. And we've got the squirrel with his little squirrel. What are little squirrels called? Do they have names? Hmm, interesting. Might have to find that one out. And then another double page spread is coming, which is, I believe, Christmas Day. Looks like all the boxes are being opened and everyone's really happy and having a great time. So she's just caught a falling star with the gingerbread chocolate house in the background and the snowman. This one is a little bit arty. So we've got what looks like a, well, it looks like a bat, I think, that's wearing a beret. He's got his art um, paint palette in his hand. So it looks like he's doing a bit of painting. I'm trying to figure out exactly what. She's got some brushes in her hat. Hmm, I can't see what they're actually painting, but maybe it's these decorations. So we've got a little paragraph here from Clara, just again, her beautiful prose about the, uh, the fairy land that she's created. And um, then we've got some cutouts. So Clara does these in, in every one of her books, I think. You'll cut out these doors and they will correspond to a page throughout the book that has had a, um, an open door on it. So this one is obviously a closed door, but somewhere throughout the book there will be houses that have open doors. And then you can cut these out and stick them on so you can create your own open flap book. So that's it, just a nice wallpaper design to finish there. So I really hope you've enjoyed looking through this book. It's gorgeous. It's exactly what we've come to expect from Clara. It's very much more of the same. So if you are a big fan, you will love this. I'm certain of it. Links will be in the description. Let me know in the comments what you thought of it. And thank you very much for watching. See you soon on Colour with Claire.